Shalom. It is Sunday, June the 6th, and um, it's like 9 o'clock in the morning. It's already starting to get hot outside, and there are quite a few new things in the garden this, uh, today. I do have quite a bit of growth in the green stalks, and there's even some of the bottom lettuces that are starting to come up right there. But, yeah, they're starting to get a lot of greenery right there. The broccoli is starting to head up. As you can see right here, we're getting little florets right there in the center, which is kind of cool. I can just keep the stinking worms off of them. Almost all of the tomato plants are putting on fruit, which is amazing. Um, this dahlia right here is finally poked its head above the soil. So, I'm not sure how long it takes those to grow. I just thought they're beautiful plants. So, um, earlier this week, I came out here and the plants that we were, had started in the house in the little, um, the little tubs, um, I came out here and got those stuck in the ground so and they've already started growing like little weeds this is what we have here we have um, Zulu and Lilac we have Zulu and Lilac Bell and we have some sweet chocolate and we have some these were really giant yellow bell and red bell peppers and then we have the Alicia. Okay. And then. Then in this this one, in this bed, we have the uh, Fresno and the chili peppers. We had one single solitary black cobra that made it. <laughs> um, three orange bells made it. Uh, all three is I got three three seeds and all three of those made it but um, these germinated but they were not very strong plants and it took them a while before they were even able to put on their uh, second leaves what the birds have been playing in this bed they like plucking those out I'm just glad they're leaving my plants alone okay so in this bed we have Tabasco and pimentos. I mean look at that. They are like uh, where are you? There you are. Look at that. They are just really poking their heads above the soil and I love that. And then I've left some space here for the chocolate habaneras when they decide to pop their little heads above. Another new thing in the garden this week is almost all of the peppers have have put on fruit which is really cool and here is pimentos well, almost all of them I mean look at that awesome um the jalapenos I know we got some over here somewhere I did get these staked up so this also is new since the last video um, we decided to not use we decided to not use wooden stakes in this bed so what we did instead was um, these little I think they're like six bucks at Walmart something like that and they originally look like this right here and we took the ends and we just pulled them apart like like that so we just pulled them apart and it made a wider it made for a wider thing and so we only needed two on each side and I have the tomatoes staked up and there there is fruit on just about all of the tomatoes now. The Brussels sprouts, the purple Brussels sprouts are coming up 
really nicely. And we also have, bam, we have a Cubanelle pepper. Um, some more of the cucumbers are putting on flowers, but they're not putting on growth, which is a little concerning. Perhaps I'll try some more fertilizer. These are the, this is the cayenne bed. And look at this. I mean, look at that growth. They have shut up at least, I think at least a foot this week, over this past week. And we are, look, there's a baby. <laughs> um, so this one, they're starting to put on fruit too. <clears throat> We're gonna have to figure out some type of staking system for these babies because they get wild. Yeah, they start sticking their branches out everywhere. So this is my radishes. The radishes keep covering the habanera plant. So sometimes I have to come out here and trim some of the, the uh, leaves off. But this is the rad the black radish and the uh, habanera bed. Everything looks beautiful. And the radishes are definitely helping to keep the weeds down, but they also hide them <laughs> sometimes. Okay. But, you know, keeping the soil shaded really makes it easier that you really got to be careful about the weeds growing next to your plants because they will suck the nutrients from the plants. And so I guess that's something I need to do when I get up, get a, come out here a little later to actually work on the garden a little bit. Um, the first tomato I had was this one right here, and it's already look at the size of that, uh, and it's got more more on it, and this one as well. Okay, these are the poblano peppers on this side and on the other side I can't on this side we have the chili red peppers and they are putting on fruit also so that's so exciting when you see it it's just so exciting when you put the work in and you look at it and you are just so amazed at how wonderful Yahuwah is and how much he just all, all you do is do a little care and he makes it grow I mean, how awesome is that that um, he just I mean it's so such a blessing to watch it grow and to put on fruit and um, it just it blows me away with the beauty of the plants and how they and how they just they they grow and they flourish and uh, you know I'm telling you prayer makes a difference it really does so back to the garden the bok choy has gone to seed and that's okay because it's still edible it is not bitter but so I will harvest some seed and then harvest the plants. I said, look at this. Bell peppers. So these two beds are the, the sweet bell peppers and um, an extra red bell pepper that I planted right here in the spot where the other one died. Something else that's new this week, we just did this um, Friday morning at like seven o'clock in the morning, our, our neighbors were probably not very happy with us, but we got some bins for composting. Um, I, when we first started gardening, we used this for compost and it worked really good it was really difficult to open the door and to um, turn the compost to keep it from stinking um, which the neighbors never complained it never stunk that bad when we got it out to put it in the beds it really stunk but 
the plants loved it. They didn't care that it stunk. It was, you know, they just grew like crazy. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, this is what we did. So this is what we did. They are three foot by three foot. And what I'm going to do is transfer from one to the other. And these are the doors which will open out. Those are just the step-in ones. And uh, we'll just open those out and transfer from one to the other to turn it. Um, yeah. So I also need to get some mulch out here too to drop in there and some uh, active compost from the mulch because that mulch is breaking down like crazy. So right now I have all of my trees just kind of hanging out together right here and they don't seem to be too unhappy about it but I will organize them and straighten them out somewhere. So this is the one, the blackberry and it's coming back. I see the something's been eating on it, on the leaves. But it is coming back, so what we're doing is working. We're just feeding it and um, watering it really well. Uh, have not sprayed it with anything other than water to get the bugs off. This blackberry right here that we cut back has put on new, a lot of new foliage right here. Same with this one. The birds keep stealing my blessed strawberries. <laughs> the Logan berries are starting to turn color and get plump. So we'll be harvesting those pretty soon once they start turning color. These are blackberries. They're so sad and tiny. Look, I mean, look at that. That's so tiny. But it too, I mean, it got hit really hard with the freeze. But it too is putting on new foliage. So the trimming them back really can make a difference. This is supposed to be a mint julep rose. Yeah. It got trimmed back and it's got some new foliage on here that looks pretty good. So, I've also fed it. The figs, well the cherry tree, dwarf cherry tree, tree and dwarf, dwarf cherry tree, figs, goji berries, the Bird's got the goji berry off of there. Pretty typical. It's a bit of a pain trying to keep these weeds pulled out. Purslane is really kind of interesting plant. The blooms close up at night and then they start opening up when the sun comes out and you can see and these are fully edible. You can eat the flowers, you can eat the, the, the leaves in your salads. They're uh, kind of mucilage. They're, um, it's, it's a succulent and it's, it's kind of gooey. There is one more thing I wanted to show you this morning, and that is the blueberry. We actually harvested, harvested some this week, which Kelsey loved. Look at that beauty right there. <laughs> they're starting to, they're starting to turn blue. So far, it's just this one. The others are getting a little light purple tinge on them, as you can see right here. Um, but they haven't started turning yet. But these are loaded with little blue berries and we'll have to come out here later and pluck them before the birds get them. 
these right here also have like the light light purple tinge but they're not ready to harvest yet I made a mistake uh, in an earlier video I said that this right here is clover it's not once it put on its flowers I could tell what it is it's wood sorrel um, which is a new thing to me and everything above the, the the soil is edible for this plant I'm not sure where you're watching um, including these little seed pods it's very lemony very tart very lemony it's actually really nice you don't want to eat a lot of them um, but a little bit is really good um, once again an interesting thing about the wood sorrel is these little seed pods once they open up they will pop open and those seeds can shoot up to 12 feet away which is kind of cool but the wood sorrel actually has a lot of health benefits so if you're interested you can always look that up um, I may do an article on my website about it so but yeah that's really cool And it, it's very, it's lemony, it's lemony, it is edible, it does have health benefits. It's very tart, like lemon, lemon juice, so. Um, that'll do it for our walkthrough in the garden today. Thank you for joining me. Yahweh bless you and keep you and give you shalom. God bless you. Until next time, have a good week. <laughs>